All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 16th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. Should I do it in profile or should I say, let there be light? Yes, uh, Christians are not creatures of the darkness. We don't hide in the shadows. That's why the world can't stand us. Because the world likes to hide in the shadows. No, as Jesus said, that this is the judgment, that light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil. No, evil people hide. They don't want to be exposed. That's why Congress never investigates Congress. Wow, would that be a dirty mess? If you wanted to see how to expose, this is going to have to wait for something, for something else, but to expose the corruption that is not just endemic there, but institutionalized in the Congress. Of course, it's all plastered over with platitudes and excuses. Like, how come the laws you pass don't apply to you? Well, that's because that would give the executive branch a weapon to use against Congress. <laughs> well, if con the executive branch wanted to do that, they could, like, turn off your air conditioning. <laughs> okay. Uh, yesterday, when I had tried to uh, use a clip from a Matt Walsh episode, that I thought was very revealing, uh, Nancy Pelosi appearing at the drag queen event. <laughs> but uh, Viacom CBS claimed copyright on that, on a 30-second clip that was for commentary purposes, which is utterly legal. See, this is just uh, corporations, and church corporations did the same thing, Joel Osteen's church, and I, others, uh, people that use uh, stock photos and stock video in their videos, I think you'll end up with copyright strikes because the outfits that do that will make claims. Uh, yeah. and so if you put uh, something in the background and it's copyrighted and somebody else takes a clip out of your video and comment on your video, then the stock content provider is apt to claim a copyright strike. The corporations protecting their own butts. <laughs> the love of money is the root of all manner of evil. All kinds of evil. Congress is an example of that. The Democrats, the Republicans. The White House is an example. Of that. The, the whole political system is an example of corruption. So you, you can have these wonderful ideas about democracy and the, the, the will of the people and everything else, but it's all a lie because it quickly turns into something else, if it was ever the, the real thing. Uh, but what I, I saw also when I was at Matt Walsh's site, there was, he had a video that where uh, he was commenting on uh, the sexual confusion among people in this country, among uh, LGBTQ+, plus especially, whatever the current alphabet soup they are using to designate themselves. And there's a reason why that keeps changing, too. But in this little video clip that was from a, a, uh, a woman there that was simply interviewing, not Matt Walsh's employee, somebody that was, sim others that was simply interviewing people at a gay pride, a pride event, let's just say a pride event uh, this month. 
uh, and asking because there was a couple of young ladies uh, that Walsh had the clip he had on or featured them were, that were simply being asked what are they and it was not a hostile question or anything and, and, and the difficulty with these two young women or, you know almost girls the two young women uh, very young women trying to explain and apply whatever the 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 of the 150 or so gender possibilities to themselves oh i'm this well that and, and they were utterly confused about their identity which is true of the entire movement see that's their problem they have an identity problem and i don't say it's the only problem but an identity problem they don't know what they are And it goes beyond that. I mean, the United States doesn't know what it is. Who is a stupid president back in the 20th century that said the business of America is business? Well, that's a worthwhile goal. So, in other words, the business of America is greed. Because capitalism is not simply people buying and selling. Uh, it is greed. It is the accumulation of of the means of production, that always wanting more at the expense of others and then justifying yourself, you know, like the robber barons uh, of the late 19th and uh, early 20th century, uh, the Rockefellers and the Carnegies and, uh, you know, the railroad barons, uh, they weren't interested in the welfare of others. They were just interested in becoming the, the, the king of the hill and staying there. And they were ruthless. They were utterly ruthless. They destroyed other people's business. They either bought their businesses or destroyed them. Wickedness. See, free market, unrestrained free market is evil because it's simply the exercise of people's sinfulness. Because unregenerate people, people that aren't born again, who aren't, don't have the Spirit of Christ in them, will act out of self-interest. Some manage to adjust that in such a way as uh, their self-interest is to appear benevolent. I'm thinking, I just, uh, I just had a flashback in my mind to one of the early uh, uh, Netflix House of Cards episodes where the uh, the future president's wife, if you want to call it that, uh, obviously they had an open marriage. Basically, they would uh, hump anything that came along. Any place it was. Wow, that was degenerate. But, you know, the, the, I suspect something that is not removed from reality today. But uh, look, look at Biden's son. They haven't publicly released the contents of the laptop, have they? Now, that's been squirreled away someplace, suppressed by the press, just like the, the American press suppressed the sexual antics of John F. Kennedy in the White House. They knew about it. It was common knowledge. They just suppressed it. Just like under uh, uh, Roosevelt, not Teddy Roosevelt, the, uh, the other one, the, the fact that he was paralyzed in a wheelchair was, was not publicly presented. It was hidden, carefully hidden. And the press were all in on it. Now, <clears throat> the, the illusions are necessary for these kind of people. But the, 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 the young ladies utterly confused about what they were. Well, isn't that really the, what really goes on there? These people are confused. They're, and as I've mentioned before, um, the, there's a philosophical basis. Now, there's spirit, underneath it all, there's a spiritual problem. But let's go to the philosophy first. The, the death of philosophy which even some philosophers have acknowledged, 
you had the you know beginning with uh, Socrates and Plato and and uh, Aristotle and others. Uh, you had the rise of philosophy. The, philosoph the word philosophy it means love of wisdom. Sophia is wisdom. Uh, Sophia is per personified, for example, in the book of Proverbs. Wisdom is something to be desired. Wisdom is understanding. And knowing, not only knowing facts, but knowing what to do with them. Uh, it is much more than knowledge. It's much deeper and more important than knowledge. And that's the way the Bible presents it that way, too. But pagan philosophy is rooted in ignorance. It's not... It, it, uh, philosophy deals with things that only can be received through the revelation of God. It's beyond... You can't discover these things, and that was one of the, the great uh, arrogant failures of humanism is the idea that... And philosophy was the idea of man, starting from himself, in the so-called enlightenment, can come to all knowledge. No, there are things that have to be revealed to you. You can't discover, for example, origins. You'll only create a story to explain them. Just like the Big Bang is no different than... Uh, in some ways, then the idea that the world is carried on the back of a great tortoise. It's simply, well, you look and think, uh, and then you think and make up a narrative to explain it. That's exactly what astrophysics does and all this stuff. They look at the stuff that they can examine, and then they make up a narrative to explain that. Contrary to what God tells us, which is consistent with what is seen, too, because they do not like God. They try to suppress the knowledge of God. That's part of being a fallen race. See, that's, that's where the Scripture is so important. And when you forget that, you're totally in the dark. Totally in the dark. Even less light than this. So, uh, but philosophy went... Th through the the classical uh, period and then into the the eventually to the the, the Christian period with people like uh, uh, Augustine and Aquinas and many others of lesser renown uh, that are still used today like uh, well, and um, theologians slash philosophers. But uh, then with the rise of the Enlightenment and a return to the classics, a pre-Christian world view, uh, and this was the suppression of, uh, came the suppression of God, the God of the Bible. Now, the problem is Roman Catholicism and Orthodoxy to a somewhat lesser degree. State religion. When the, when the state wed the church, well, the state doesn't want a competitor like Jesus Christ being actively involved. It wants to take the place of that. So you've got uh, a, a form of Christianity that isn't truly Christianity. A Christianity that can be seen with the eye, which is never real Christianity, because real Christianity is spiritual. The kingdom of God, Jesus said, unless you are born again, you cannot even behold the kingdom, the rule of God. So you look at the world, and they see things with natural eyes, but the eyes of sinful humanity. And because they do not wish to recall the presence of the act of God as God is, they want to suppress that because he makes them feel guilty because they are guilty. They're sinful. They're in rebellion against God, so they want to get him out of the picture. But So that was the rise of the Enlightenment and, and then humanism. But in there, too, in the uh, late 19th century and the early 20th century, you had the, the rise of nihilism. 
philosophy realized that the the empiricism and the idea that man can discover uh, out of himself can discover truth, the meaning of reality and the meaning of life, they realize you can't do that. Empiricism can't establish truth as truth. It's only relative. It's only, well, it could be this or could be that. Never more. Never more. And, you know, you had the, uh, who was the one that did the critique of pure reason? And that led to nihilism, to the despair of the inability of man to discover truth and meaning. Because he'd rejected God. Of course he has the inability to discover it. He's, he rejected truth itself. In rejecting God, the creator of all things, he rejected everything. You rejected truth. It's, it's God is, is the guarantor that what we perceive with our senses is actually there because he made it. Without him, everything's up for grabs. And so you had nihilism, and then which says nothing has meaning, nothing, there's no value in anything. You, you've got to make your own, you know, the, the will to power. You have to do a an act to establish your reality, you know, to prove you, to yourself that you exist. And then out of that, too, came existentialism. And that was imported into the United States from some German, with some German refugees. Uh, and existentialism is, yes, everything is meaningless, life has no purpose, we're all going to die. But you have to establish your own values, your own meaning, your own identity, because you don't have one otherwise. Well, this is all rejection of the scriptures and the truth of what human beings were created to be. See, we're not just free-floating biological uh, absurdities. Because without God, it's all absurd. Everything's absurd. There is no meaning to anything. It's no rational basis for anything. Right and wrong becomes meaningless. It's just social constructs. And of course, out of this flows the ideas like gender is a social construct because there's, there's no purpose and it, there was no creator that made man in his own image, male and female, God made them with a purpose. See, there's no purpose. People have no purpose. You have to establish your own purpose because there's nothing out there that can really tell you purpose. There may not be anything out there at all. You know, existentialism. Well, everything's absurd, but you have to go on anyway. Make your own reality. And now we see the fruit of that philosophy. And I'm speaking in natural language. This is man's thinking apart from God. The rejection of God, man's thinking apart from God. Apart from God's revelation. This is a natural progression that humanity's gone through over the last 6,000 years, which is the length of human history. God has revealed it. So, uh, you know, e even uh, philosophers or scientific philosophers like Popper, when he talked about the... Uh, the fundamental error of science, the, the error the, of the, the logical fallacy of induction, in other words, the logical fallacy of empiricism. Looking at facts and then thinking you can put together a narrative that actually explains those facts and is established as the correct narrative. See, there's multiple explanations. Oh, there's a Christian philosopher uh, I was thinking of, Occam, Occam's razor. You know, the idea that the, the simplest explanation is probably, probably the correct one. So you can only probably establish things as true, which leaves you in doubt, right? It's only true until a, a fact comes along that doesn't fit the narrative. Well, what does science do today? It suppresses that fact, buries it in a drawer in the bottom of some museum, 
You know, it's just like the uh, red shift, the Hubble constant, the, the expansion of the universe. Well, not all stars and galaxies exhibit a red shift. It's like Andromeda, as I pointed out the other day. The, the nearest galaxy, huge, bigger than the Milky Way, that's headed toward us at high speed, relatively high speed. Four or five billion years it'll hit us. It's not a problem. It's all going to be changed way before then. Uh, new creation. We're right on the on the edge of the coming, the appearance of the Lord Jesus. What we have now is the appearance of the man of sin, the man of lawlessness, unrestrained lawlessness. You know, the uh, it's it's ironic that the, the September or the uh, January sixth committee. They are the lawless ones that are overthrowing the government and the Constitution. The Congress is the ones that have been repeatedly acting lawlessly, the, and the presidents. I mean, how many executive decrees did Biden sign as soon as he got back to the office after his swearing-in? whole stack of them. That's lawlessness. There is no constitutional provision for such things. That is, well, the same thing happened in Rome. You had, Rome was a republic. In fact, America is largely modeled on pagan Rome. But the Senate, there, there was a secondary body that represented the people, too, with the, the tribunes. But the Senate, which was the wealthy plutocrats and uh, oligarchs they controlled everything had degenerated to the point they couldn't govern it was all petty infighting and everything else and uh, ended up Caesar who was like uh, the uh, the executive but he was basically uh, under the control of the Senate just started taking power to himself and the Senate just let it happen because they didn't want to make the decisions. They didn't want the responsibility. They just wanted to enjoy their position and, you know, wallow in re a wealth and decadence, which is what they did. Uh, and so gradually uh, the, uh, the emperors, uh, who weren't called emperors at the time, accumulated more and more power to themselves and they allowed the Senate to continue but simply as a deck it became like the the uh, uh, the royal family in England the monarchy England's not a monarchy it's not ruled by the Queen that is just window dressing historical window dressing the Queen has no real power at least she refuses to assert it that'd be an interesting revolution in England wouldn't it if the queen said, enough of this nonsense, I'm still the queen, I'm going to fire Boris Johnson. And I'm going to kick all of you out, and you're going to have new elections, clean elections, and elect responsible Christian people to office. <laughs> because I am the servant of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine the revolution that would cause? Or at least the assassination of the queen that that would cause. In today's world if, if the queen who is also the technically the head of the church in lieu of the presence of Jesus Christ were to assert that England is a Christian country and you can't hold public office unless you're a Christian uh, it wouldn't solve all the problems but boy with that you know but no there are of course she's unwilling to do such a thing She's, she's uh, thoroughly corrupt and thoroughly traditionally corrupt. Look at her, look at the royal family. Talk about a bunch of losers. Yikes. <laughs> There's nothing good there. Eh. These classes don't sit straight. Uh, but the, the, uh, cor the progress of human history, the so-called progress, the liberal, especially in the liberal West, has been a downgrade to the bottom, a race to the bottom, and that's where we are. Existentialism 
uh, as a philosophical description uh, of American culture and the liberal Western world, which used to be called Christendom, uh, really is where it is. That's you, you, I, like those two young women who do not know they're two young women. They, they, they're lost. What was that? Uh, Don McLean had a song many years ago, Bye Bye Miss American Pie. And there was a line in there talking about, uh, it was almost prophetic, uh, but a generation lost in space. And it, it was in that song, she says he just, the lyrics were just sort of random things. But it talks about uh, uh, re the rejecting of God, really, rejecting of Christ. And the consequences of that is the lyrics. It's in the lyrics, but it's like maybe that's just an interpretation of it. But it's, it's, that's what the United States is. It's a generation lost in space. The West is a generation lost in space. In other words, like... Uh, um, uh, the, some of the, the science fiction shows where uh, the spacecraft is lost. They don't know where they're going or, or they're, they've lost all contact with, with Earth and reality and they're drifting out there on their own uh, into the unknown darkness. That's where the United States is. That's where the Western world is. That's where the LGBTQ plus whatever is. They're a generation lost in space with no identity, stripped of everything. They don't know who they are. They're struggling to create their own identities, which is beyond their capacity because a self-made identity is not a real identity. Humanity was made by God in, to be God's image, and humanity fell. See, the Bible explains all this, and it's rational. It says, oh, that's why we're such a mess. Yeah. But God's provided an answer, too, in Jesus Christ. But when you reject that, when you reject the God who is, there's only one God, and it's not the God of the Quran. And it's not the God of the Mormons or of uh, the Hindus or of uh, the Talmud because the God of the Talmud is not the God of the Old Testament. <laughs> There's only one God. That's the God who created all things. But it's not the deist God either. It's a God who so loved the world, creation. that he gave his only begotten son to save human beings who were the epitome of creation. Even the angels were created as to be servants of human beings. See, Jesus Christ is the second Adam. So you want to know what, how things were supposed to be, you have to look at him. And he's coming again, and he is going to put things back in order. There really is no hope until that happens. But I, I was looked at those two young women, and I just felt sorry for them. Because it's, it's not just an individual thing, it's a societal thing. And obviously, you know, if those two young girls had grew up when I grew up, they wouldn't be that way because it's social pressure. They're trying to conform. Young people find their identity not in themselves, but usually, but often it's, it's peer pressure and they're trying to conform to everybody else because they don't know what they are yet. They, they do not know what they're going to do with their lives. And the system we've created is decidedly destructive for those people finding their identity uh, and growing up as healthy human beings. 
uh, 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 even as fallen, healthy fallen human beings. But it's 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 the, the Western world, especially, is at the end. It has reached the edge of the abyss. This is the terminus of humanity. The end point. The only thing that can save humanity is the return of the King, the return of the Messiah, the return of the Savior, the return of God, the Son. Without that, there is no hope. All liberalism and liberal democracy and human rights and all these human inventions have shown themselves to be utterly bankrupt and powerless against the sinfulness of man and the spiritual for forces of darkness that are out there too that the world also doesn't acknowledge much of the world they're there and they're real and sinful human beings especially that have no identity are incredibly easy to manipulate they don't even think anymore in this Orwellian world of the United States and the West the Western Europe and, and uh, Australia and you know the what used to be uh, something other has come to the point where thought crimes consist of thinking the very f the very fact that you think and you seek to understand has become an act of rebellion you are supposed to be a mindless boob just look at what YouTube loves to promote mindlessness The sound of rain to put you to sleep. Pictures of kitties and puppies. Talk about Orwellian goo. Orwell could not imagine 2022. But here we are. Do not put your hope in elections because the system itself is corrupt and corrupted itself. The very idea of government of the people, by the people, and for the people is a denial of the existence of God. It's a denial of the truth of Scripture. And of course, Lincoln was not a Christian. He did not subject himself to the Word of God. He never was baptized, not even baptized. He never claimed to be a Christian. And it shows. See, when you make heroes out of the godless, oh, he believed in like a deistic God. He read the Bible, but he didn't believe what it says. Just like Jefferson read the Bible, read it enough that he edited it, took out the parts he didn't like, like the miracles of Jesus. See, Jefferson was happy to have the morality of Jesus, the ethics of Jesus, love your neighbor, but loving God, not so much. But he would not receive the reality of the deity of Jesus Christ, the humanity and the deity of Christ. Because that made him responsible to Christ. He wanted a God he could do with as he pleased. Keep him on the shelf or worship him or whatever. But Jefferson had to be sovereign. That was the real issue there. That this, the, his... He is cutting out the Jeffersonian Bible, and I mean, I saw this at the, I was 
you could buy them from the Park Service at the Jefferson Memorial. Shows that he rejected the authority of God, the authority of Jesus Christ, the fact that he would select what he wanted to receive and what he didn't want to receive. Where we are now is at the abyss. One time personally I was at the abyss, at the very edge. But God in his mercy convicted me of my sinfulness. Preserved me. And then led me to himself. Revealed himself to me. The Holy Spirit revealed that Jesus died for my sins. And I believed it. I knew it to be true. Just like Peter Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is, in, who is in heaven. Even so, God revealed that Jesus Christ died for my sins to me. For my sins. He died for them. Not just for mine, but for yours too. I knew it to be a fact. Though. I knew it because it was revealed, revealed to me by God. And because of that, of course, I believed it, and I was born again. I well, certainly was not instantly perfect, but there was something new in me. And it's been there for, what, 46 years, I believe? Didn't I calculate that the other day? Yeah, because I remember, I was born again on the, the well, 1976, when America was only 200 years old. The United States. Well, not really, because, uh, in fact, because the United States of America as it is, it wasn't until the Constitution, 1789. Uh, but, what is it? I think it was 46. Yeah, 46 years. 46 years. God's put up with me for 46 years. I'm still pretty much a mess, but God's going to fix that. When Christ returns, and I'll be conformed to his image, to the very image of Christ, just like everyone who belongs to him. My body will re be redeemed. No more sinful flesh to deal with. The perfection of Christ. sinlessness. What a day that will be. To walk in perfect harmony with God all the time. What a day that will be. To walk as Christ walked. Or as a glorified Christ is, actually. But that's, see, that's God's solution. God, rather than simply destroying Adam and Eve when they sinned and rebelled against him, even they died spiritually, they were cut off from him. They were, the relationship with God was broken. That's death. Because God is the way, the truth, and the life. To be separated from that is death. Whether sp physical will eventually come, death will eventually come out of that. Be separated from God is death. Because God is life. To be separated from God is, is evil and darkness because God is goodness and light. And our identity can only be found in Him because we were created for Him and for a relationship with Him. A personal relationship. Not a relationship with an organization a church or a government, but a relationship with him. And we can never have proper relationships with one another apart from that. We must first be reconciled to him. And Christ makes that possible. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But you have to be want to be saved from what you are, a sinner an enemy of God, hostile toward him, 
loving the darkness, loving what is evil. And he will do that to whoever, for whoever calls upon him. Jesus Christ makes that possible. He paid for your sins. He died on a cross in your place, paying the penalty of the, of, under the law that the wages of sin is death. The soul that sins shall die. Jesus died in your place. If you receive him, if you receive what he has done for you, then you will be saved. If you reject God's salvation, God's Savior, what Christ has done, who he is, and his authority over you, well, then you will remain in the dark, remain lost for eternity. Your identity being a rebel against God, your Creator, against God, your Savior. Having rejected the salvation God purchased for you on the cross with the life of his only begotten Son, who was himself God and man, the one mediator between God and man, the one hope. There is no other salvation other than in Jesus Christ. So my appeal to you, if you do not know him, is to call upon God to save you. Call upon Jesus Christ to be your Savior and your Lord. To deliver you from the darkness and the chaos of this world. To deliver you from the judgment that's coming. And is already in progress. The days ahead It is good to be walking with God through the mess, through the minefield, through the chaos. Because without that, without him, there's no way you will make it through 